All right, welcome everyone to another uh, job spotlight session. Uh, today, we have one of our customers, the American Family Life Institute. They have a much longer name. Uh, I'm just gonna abbreviate for, for this discussion. Uh, but we have, uh, we have Charvi and John McIntyre, uh, uh, team members of EMFAM joining us today to share more about the internship program, share more about the VC world, how you can break into it, uh, what's the day in life and how you can, uh, how you can expect your uh, manager if you are to join a VC firm or a VC uh, or impact investing uh, organization like EMFAM, uh, what they can expect of you. So uh, we're excited to host this topic. I see it's a, a very popular one with all the people that have been joining. So my name is Kunal. I'm one of the community managers here at Mentor Spaces. I just want to kick off the discussion with that topic uh, information as well as let everybody know that if you have any questions at any point during this discussion, feel free to uh, raise your hand and we can unmute you or you can leave your questions in the Q&A here in Zoom and we'll fold those conversa uh, questions into the conversation. Um, Please look out for also uh, poll questions and uh, chat messages inside of the Zoom chat. We'll have an engaging back and forth of uh, understanding where people are in their career um, and what they're looking to achieve, as well as uh, get feedback on, um, are you interested in applying to this internship and or connecting with mentors after this, uh, this session. So AMFAM has about seven mentors that have joined mentor spaces to stay connected uh, with uh, the community who is interested in their opportunities. So um, uh, please answer yeah, the poll questions uh, afterwards so that you can uh, connect with the mentors um, that you're interested in. With that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to our moderator, uh, Randy Emelo who will be uh, moderating this discussion with uh, the questions and answers that we have prepared for Sharvi and, and John. But again, as I mentioned, feel free to ask any questions that come up during the conversation. Andy? Yeah, thank you, Kanal. And welcome everyone for joining our session today. My name, as uh, Kanal mentioned, is Randy Amalo, and I'm the chief strategist here at Mentor Spaces. And I get to work with our customers around building effective uh, mentoring programs to reach people like yourselves and to help open the doors of possibility. And with us today, we have uh, Sharvi and we have John, both from the American Family um, Insurance Company, but they have a very particular focus there. And I'm going to let them explain a little bit about what they do and how they do it and why this is so exciting uh, because they're just not into venture capital. There's a, there's a particular focus that they're going after. Um, so go ahead, uh, Kunal, do we, um, why don't we go ahead and have uh, Sharvi, sorry, uh, just take a few moments and introduce yourself and let everyone know a little bit about, um, a little bit about your background and a little bit about what you do uh, for uh, AmFam. Yeah. Um... Thanks, Randy, and thanks, Kunal, for organizing this. Super excited to be here. And like Randy said, I work with the American Family Insurance Institute for Corporate and Social Impact, and that name is a mouthful. Uh, we just go with AmFam Institute for short. So we are a social impact investing fund that's part of the larger American Family Insurance. And what stands out in our work compared to other Typical VC funds is that we focus on the double bottom line. So investing both for financial returns as well as social impact. Um, so we look to in, um, invest in impactful early stage startups that are what we call our mission statement, closing equity gaps in the US. And we work across um, four different sectors, education, uh, mental health, and um, economic opportunity, which looks at workforce and wealth. And finally also, um, resiliency and climate tech, and all of this with the um, focus on social impact. So that's sort of what I think makes our work super interesting and a little harder um, because we're always looking for those innovative and creative business models. Um, and I work with the fund as an associate. My background has been primarily in entrepreneurship and investing um, in India and Southeast Asia. I moved here to the US to get my master's in public administration and then joined the fund as an intern um, and then continued on to now be a full-time part of the fund. Um, a lot of my day-to-day -day role looks at bringing in companies, meeting um, great founders and teams like Kunal and Randy's um, and helping invest in them. 
Thank you so much, Sharvi. And we're so glad to have you here. And uh, I'm sure that everyone's going to benefit from your understanding as to how your organization works and what value it might bring to them uh, as they're considering internship opportunities. Uh, John, how about yourself? Can you take a moment and introduce yourself? Yes, hi, everybody. Uh, glad to be here. And first of all, thank you, Charvi, for uh, putting this session on. I I'm here to support the session with any uh, questions, but I have a, a fairly long background in venture capital, about 25 years in venture capital. But as Charvi said, um, joined the AmFam Institute um, in, right at the end of 2018, almost exactly three years ago, to start this new fund for social impact. So, you know, being able to invest in startups that are doing socially impactful things is so exciting. And that's why I wanted uh, to take this opportunity in my career to, to do that. And uh, over the last uh, three years, we've built the team. Charby was an intern with us uh, while she was in grad school. Um, and then when she completed that, uh, we were able to bring her on full time. So I think she can tell you a lot about her experience as we work with interns and um, look to help support them in any way we can, not only with their work with us, but in their careers uh, for the long term. Great. Thank you so much, John. And again, we're just so grateful that you're here sharing time with us today. Um, right away, one of the questions that came in is the very first question I was going to ask anyway. So let's start with Sharvi and uh, uh, take a few moments and let us know and let, let the audience know what is a typical day-to-day -day like for someone uh, who's interning for, uh, for your organization? Yeah, no, I think that's uh, a super interesting question for anyone in BC because no day is alike. Um, every day has something new that you're doing or um, you know, speaking to new people. But I think a big part of the work can be categorized in three or four different buckets. Um, one big one is um, helping the team members as they're working with companies. So speaking to entrepreneurs and helping through diligence processes. So that can be early conversations or digging into financials and business models and asking hard questions, or it can be um, helping them, you know, doing research in certain parts of the business model or problem or solution. So a big part of it is the diligence and working with entrepreneurs. The second is a, in the VC world, we spend a lot of time building, honing and rethinking our theses or areas of investments, where should we be really focusing on? And that is an ongoing process and we love to engage our interns in that process given, especially if they have very specific interests or backgrounds or things that even they would like to learn. Um, and for me, I spent my first summer uh, building the thesis of investment in water that we now currently also still have. And every intern who's come has helped us evolve and build new theses. That's another big bucket of work that um, interns have um, helped us out with and find themselves doing. And I think the other, uh, the last one is helping go through different companies um, and seeing which ones would be of interest and really sort of building those relationships both with companies as well as investors, which is valuable to us at the fund because we are always looking for that, but also for an intern to build that network ecosystem and get themselves out there. I found that to be a really interesting part of my day-to-day -day job as a VC. Right. That's Thanks so much for the firsthand knowledge that you're passing on. You know, it's nothing's better than Here's what I experienced, and uh, I really, I really do um, hope everyone in the audience appreciates the fact that this isn't a brochure, this isn't a canned presentation. You're, you're actually hearing someone's lived experience. Um, I'm going to do one quick follow-up question, then we'll jump over to John. Um, out of your internship, uh, what, how did it help you in making decisions about what you wanted to do with your career, and? Uh, you know, based on your experience, I guess the follow on to that might be um, what could someone what are some of the takeaways someone could get by participating in this program? Yeah, um, that's an interesting question, because uh, for me, I in my career always knew that I wanted to work with an impact first mindset. So that looked at, you know, what are ways that I can use my skills and my knowledge to, you know, do good and you know, make the world a better place. And there are multiple avenues to do that. So I could be working in, um, you know, the UN, so the development consultancies or with an NGO or a nonprofit or in impact investing and many more. 
So with all of these paths in front of me while I was in grad school, it was hard for me to really figure out which would be the best one where my skills would be used. Would this be interesting? And, you know, what are parts of a job that I really like and don't? And for me, being an intern in this VC fund helped me realize that, one, I really like being at the intersection of finance and impact. Um, that's where I think I want to put in my skills and my time. Um, and then second is that uh, really the part that I really enjoyed was being able to speak to uh, people doing such innovative, smart, interesting things and being a part of their growth journey. And that's what propelled me to then continue a career in Impact VC. So I think if that's sort of where people are or I even have some form of interest, I think this internship could be a good way to find out is, you know, do I really like this job or do I like the idea of it? <laughs> Very good. So in a sense, test the waters without having to make, you know, a lifetime commitment. Um, yeah. John, over to you for just a moment uh, and maybe a a ask the same question from a little bit more of a strategic advantage. Uh, what are you uh, looking for in uh, an intern candidate uh, that would come in and help your organization? Yeah, so um, one of the things that I found, you know, working in entrepreneurship most of my career, there, if you're in school, there's a fair amount of entrepreneur programs these days, um, but they're fairly limited venture capital programs. And so we want to grow the awareness uh, of people who are interested in exploring the investor side of entrepreneurship. So it's good when people are looking at an internship like this, that they have some knowledge of venture capital um, and um, maybe some experience. Now, of course, uh, if you're an intern, I see some questions here about if they're undergraduates in particular, you may not have had experience, but it's certainly good if you have some knowledge or maybe you've worked in entrepreneur um, programs at school or other places. Um, so you have uh, some idea of what, what it's all about. So that's kind of a, a level one um, thing we're looking at. People have some idea about uh, what investors do. And then for people that are a little more advanced, maybe their graduate level um, and have had an actual experience uh, like Charvi had, then obviously we can bring them on to do higher level work. Um, as Charvi pointed out earlier, when we're uh, actually um, updating investment thesis or talking to entrepreneurs about potential deals and so on. Um, we'd like to have, you know, a little bit more experience at that point in time. Great. Thanks so much, John. So what I'm hearing is that, you know, if you are a student and you don't have a lot of experience, um, one of the things that one of the values that is coming with your presence within mentor spaces is that uh, the, the students on the line who might be early career or college students can connect with mentors from your organization and that relationship can be cultivated. And you're also looking at those people who might be say graduate level and have some work experience, have went back uh, to pick up you know, your, your master's and whatever. And, uh, and now you're looking in finance, I would imagine, or something around markets. Uh, and now you're looking to see if social impact is, is a kind of VC firm that you would like to, to join. Am I hearing that correct, John? Yep, absolutely. Um, a key point there is a real interest in, in, in diving into the, you know, the, the investment side of entrepreneurship. Now, I see people go back and forth all the time, which is good between actually being an entrepreneur and this is a support role for entrepreneurs, but that level of interest, whether you're an undergraduate or graduate, I think is really critical for an internship like this. Great, that really helps. Um, let's go back and um, I just take a moment uh, kind of kind of jump back and forth. So Sharvi, if you would, if you can explain a little bit about uh, what was the process like for you to get into into your internship and and how painful was it to onboard and uh, get to know people and um, just a little bit of the firsthand experience. Yeah. Um... So I actually heard of AmFam because back then the fund was just sort of, you know, early days starting up. Um, I heard of the internship and the position to th through somebody who used to work here and who I knew 
you know, tangentially. So it's like one of those, oh, great successes of networking type of a story, which just sort of happenstance happened. So I was introduced because of that connection. And um, I applied uh, online, sent my CV in with like um, a cover letter. I had two rounds of interviews, one with John and another one with um, Joy Ippolito, Dr. Joy Ippolito, who is um, another director at the fund. And one of the parts of the interview process that I had to do was presenting a deck on a company to sort of explain if I would invest or not. So like, you know, an initial, what what interests me about this company, this um, your diligence and so on. And then after that, I my internship, since it was non-COVID times, was in person in um, Madison, Wisconsin, which was an interesting and different experience. I'm based out of New York. So I got to spend a summer in Madison and I think that was really helpful to be able to meet all of the team in person. And it was, um, we are a small team, only seven people and whoever the interns that come on ends up working with almost all of the team members, which was similar for me. I worked with everyone on the team through some capacity or the other. And the onboarding experience was um, back then, since it was new, it was a little, you know, like trying to figure out what's where and what's going on. but Happy to say that we've now created a smoother onboarding experience for whoever might come on. But yeah, we do spend one... a lot of time, yeah, trying to make sure that people have access to everyone on our team, set up coffee chats and sort of initial readings on what the fund is, what our thesis is, and about our portfolio companies. Yeah, it sounds like a tremendous opportunity to, again, connect with a smaller team where you actually get to work with, with all the partners and you get you know, probably some great exposure to a, a wide variety of different, um, you know, entrepreneur organizations that you're working with. So you get to see some different kind of funding models and business models mm -hmm. and uh, data and, and kind of analytics, um, you know, uh, portfolios. Anyway, it sounds really interesting to me. I'm, I'm not a VC. I've been on the other side of the table a few times, but <laughs> that's the harder side randy so you're doing the hard work <laughs> oh she's making me laugh um <laughs> no um let's uh do we have a question or two out there uh canal that's come in that we should be asking or yeah we have a, a question that came in um all about um the new competition in the vc space has been uh more from uh you know uh, traditional asset managers and hedge funds, how is that um, impacting the deals that YAMFAM um, is approaching? Yeah, um, interesting question. And one that actually we talk a lot about in our team um, every day, if not all the time, but it is something that we've been noticing is that there is there are a lot of funds out there and a lot of big funds out there who are investing, which is I think great in a sense that it's great for entrepreneurs to have those opportunities and options um, and not have to be the ones who are, it's more of an entrepreneur's market and they get to pick. And I think that's a great balance of power that need to happen. But in the same sense for us at AmpFam, what that means is we have to be more strategic in how we position ourselves and what deals and how we market ourselves. So we spend a lot of time now thinking about what is our value add to um, entrepreneurs? What is our differentiator? And how do we keep innovating and building that regularly um, for entrepreneurs to take us as an investor of choice? Uh, and also at the same time, who are other investors funds that we should know? And we should be not just you know, mindful of what I think it is important to have competition, but like also healthy competition in VC and be collaborative because that's how the industry I think comes up. So how do we collaborate with more and more funds who might not be our traditional partners of choice, but are entering spaces that we invest in in social impact? That's fantastic. Uh, are there other questions, Kunal? Yeah. Um, let's see. There's a question about we can get we can get into the interview process and more about the internship in a second. Here, there's also a question about uh, internship opportunities in data in business analytics. Is that tied to uh, the, this current event uh, opportunity that's available? Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, one thing I want to highlight related to one of the previous points that we were talking about, Andy, is that while we are a seven-person team, the AmFam Insurance is a really large 
company with around 10,000 employees and a Fortune 500 something company. So as an intern, a great thing is that it's not just to meet the seven people within the team, but also opportunities to meet people within the insurance company. And that has all sorts of divisions, departments, be it HR, data analytics, business development, or even traditional insurance if one is interested in that. Um, and a lot of interesting work in climate and insurance as well. So that was a great experience I had. And I, for anyone else looking for opportunities within the larger insurance company, um, we can share out the link and there could be other interesting opportunities in data and those teams as well that they might be looking to hire in. It won't be connected to the VC part, but it'll be a different part. Yeah, so that's, that's great. And I appreciate you kind of filling the picture in that again, AmFam is a very large organization with lots of different focus. And even if there, there's not the opportunity be, you know, to work in your organization uh, for internship, there's also uh, referrals that could be made uh, there as well. And people, as I mentioned earlier, can also just connect with the mentor so that the idea is that you're creating a network of relationships of people in the know who can help inform and resource you. And that's really one of the, the key givebacks that, um, that your organization is giving to mentor spaces is making yourself available at, um, as mentors. So again, we appreciate that. Um, we do have uh, a few more minutes left. Uh, can you take a moment and describe, I think you've done a good pretty good job, but I'm going to give you a chance to see if you can add some kind of flourishes or touches. Uh, John, maybe to you, can you describe uh, the company culture a little bit? Yeah, culture is always such an interesting topic. Um, large companies, small companies, uh, also nowadays, like there's questions about remote work and, and, and how do you develop culture and that. So we really are kind of a, a startup within uh, American Family Insurance. Um, we, again, have a small team, seven full-time people, um, and we are remote. Um, venture capital tends to be that way these days where people are, you know, we're U.S.-based, so we're covering just the U.S., not the world, but uh, so we have people spread out across the U.S., and, and, and so we do work remotely. Um, and, you know, we like to think we're, we're quick and nimble and um, uh, as a small team can move quickly. So that more of a startup kind of culture, but we are embedded into a larger culture uh, of a large, uh, it's actually, I think we're fortune 232 at the moment, um, which is a, an over 90 year old company. Uh, so, uh, and insurance has its own culture as an industry. So it's a really different, uh, you know, between our day-to-day -day on the team and how we work versus say our, our parent, corporation who's our, our limited partner and supports us with the, the funding for the startups. Great. Thank you so much for that, John. Um, real quickly, I know that our time is kind of the sands running out of the hourglass. And as it does so, I wanted to make sure we touched on a couple of kind of the logistics. And Kunal had mentioned that we're going to get to this. So what's the application process like? I think that we've shared the link out uh, in the chat. So you can go and click on that link and apply. And as Sharvi had uh, um, shared that, you know, you put your CV cover letter, why you're the greatest person for this. Um, a couple other things that I think come up that came up in the Q&A are, is this a remote or is this um, face to face? And if so, um, is the intern going to learn to love cheese curds by going to Wisconsin or uh, deep fried cheese curds in particular are, are very popular. Everybody I've met who's had them are, changes their life. You also have to um, learn to love the Packers. It's part of my contract that I secretly ah. signed and never saw it. Um, no, I'm joking. I, it is a, a, a remote internship. So interns can be based wherever. Like I said, seven people team is already remote. So we understand that um, moving can be hard. So it's a remote internship, great. And, uh, and it's gonna be coming open. When does the internship open in the summer or spring? It's a spring internship. It's a spring internship. Spring, spring internship. Okay, um, well, thank you, John and, 
And thank you, Sharvi, for sharing your experience and wealth of knowledge. I know that there are probably many other questions. Uh, Kunal, how, um, how can the uh, audience online follow up? Yeah, absolutely. So I see there's a bunch of questions uh, here in the chat still as we're wrapping up. Uh, we may not have time to get to all the questions. Uh, I will see if I can bring one more question in, but I wanted to make sure that we communicate some final information before we ask another question here to the panelists. So um, I pushed, uh, put the link of the job in the chat just uh, a minute ago. So if you are interested in applying, feel free to follow those links. Uh, there is a poll question that's running right now. Um, so please uh, follow up with that, uh, your feedback to this session, as well as your preference for connecting with a mentor. Um, and based off of their time and availability, we'll make that connection. Um, and then finally, uh, if you have a question that isn't answered in this uh, session, please post that question inside of Mentor Spaces, inside of the AmFam Institute space. Um, you can just simply uh, copy and paste it from uh, uh, the, the chat here in Zoom and the mentors will get notified and they'll come back and answer those questions as, uh, as they come up. So with that, I'll maybe ask one more question here. Um, what are the pros and cons of uh, working in a smaller VC uh, that's particularly uh, one within a company like uh, the Institute is versus maybe a larger VC? Um, I can go quickly and then John probably has more colors since he's worked in all types of VC. Um, but I think the pros are that um, even though we are um, a small team, we get a lot of good practices from the larger organization, which makes it you know quicker to set up, quicker to have a lot of things in place like HR and operations that people don't necessarily think about. As well as I think another cool thing is um, having great teams that we can introduce our founders to where the insurance company is actually a great resource for them. And I really love being able to share that with founders and make those connections. Um, and a con can be that um, since we are part of the larger company, our processes are sometimes slower and take longer because we have to adhere to a lot of corporate processes that smaller independent VCs might not have to think about. Very good. Great. Well, thank you for joining this session. Uh, we have another session scheduled with the AmFam Institute uh, team on December uh, 1st. Uh, so after the Thanksgiving holiday at 5 p.m., John will be joining us again for that session, as well as uh, two other uh, members from the team, um, from the leadership team at, at the Institute. So uh, please join us for that. We'll be talking more about the venture capital world and how you can break in um, and um, and if the opportunity is still open, uh, you can certainly learn more about that, uh, this opportunity and other opportunities that uh, may come up. So with that, we'll go ahead and close this out. Thank you all for joining today. Um, if you have any questions, again, uh, following up of, uh, this session, please post those in Mentor Spaces. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming. <laughs>